Okay, so good day class. So today we're going to discuss about uh, provisions of the Fire Code of the Philippines or Republic Act 9515, formerly known as Presidential Decree uh, 1185. Okay, so we're going to use this slide from Engineer Riel Andrea Miranda, which is the Chief Fire Safety Enforcement uh, Division, uh, National Headquarters, Director Consultant, and High Rise Building. Fire safety evaluator, the Naptan Fire Evaluator, is also part of the technical working group on the uh, preparation of the IRR for R18. So we're going to use this slide uh, uh, so that we can uh, better understand uh, R18 9514 uh, and uh, as a law and its implications in our practice. Okay, so this uh, fire safety practitioner training course is a module one given to them. So, uh, I nine three fourteen that's the basic law. Okay, so what I what as what we have discussed uh, in the past in our video lectures, we're going to discuss about the basic law. Then we're going to make a summary uh, for its IRR or, or its standard. That way, class. It's easier to memorize standards and be acquainted with them. Because if I am going to include all standards, discuss everything, three hours is not enough. Okay, so understanding the Fire Code of the Philippines of 2008, otherwise known as Republic Act 9540. So, this is the outline of the presentation. That the rule one interpretation, uh, rule two coverage, rule three terms and authority, rule four the chief the BFP, and rule five uh, weekly organization and prevention, uh, professionalization, rule six fire brigades, fire volunteers, organizations, and fire safety practitioners, rule seven assistance and support to the BFP, rule eight fire safety enforcers, the qualifications and functions. Rule 9, Enforcement and Administration of Fire Safety Measures Rule 10, Fire Safety Measures Rule 11, Rule Acts Rule 12, Fire Code Taxes, Waste Chargers and Fines Rule 13, Administrative Forces of Action and Rule 14, the miscellane Miscellaneous and Annexes of Forms and List of Tables okay. Okay, So to understand the uh, RE 14 class, let us first uh, study the Okay, so the first significant feature of 1914 is that its function is to assist and support fire volunteers, practitioners, and fire volunteer organizations. Provided that during firefighting operations, fire volunteer organizations shall be under the direct operational control of the fire ground commanders of the Bureau of Fire Protection. So I think uh, the meaning of this paragraph is that RA9514 was uh, enacted to add also uh, support and to assist our fire volunteers. Okay? But during, in terms of fire class, it will be viewed with, under the direct operational control of the fire ground commanders of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Okay, this is a sample of a uh, certificate of competency of a fire safety practitioner. Okay, so actually, class, in the UK, we conducted uh, a training for this one back in 2010. Uh, I think I even participated uh, in it at the UEP National Headquarters in Manila. But I think they have new. Uh, rules right now how to become a fire safety practitioner. Then another significant feature is that you can call on the police, other law enforcement agencies, and local government units to render necessary assistance in the enforcement of this. Now this is particularly important class because, uh, because it would help our uh, the people in the Bureau of Fire Protection to ask for the assistance of the other uh, government agencies such as the BNP, the NBI, uh, 
Ayan. LGU. Uh, so that they could, they would be easier for them to coordinate with each other uh, in times of fire and in times uh, when they their coordination and cooperation so especially in class uh, for example if there's a fire we need the NBI and the police to investigate on what's the cause of it we should assist the BFD also this is another significant feature is that there's a mandatory inspection of every building or structure at least once a year. So it's in section 5, paragraph G. So this is also important uh, task because uh, it would mean that uh, when you build a building or structure, then uh, fire safety would be part of the maintenance of the building. So it should be part of the budget now. So this is really important because without a mandatory inspection of uh, buildings or structures, then uh, business owners will become uh, relaxed in, com uh, in complying with the different requirements of the fire code. Then another significant feature is that it required a building owner occupant to submit plans and specifications other pertinent documents of the said building to ensure compliance with applicable codes and standards. So that's section 5, paragraph G. So this is quite important uh, so that we can ensure that the plans and specifications prepared by the architect are in accordance with uh, the law or the code itself. It's not that task that uh, uh, they don't trust you in, uh, as architects, but it's a counter check. It's also for the benefit and the good of the public and the client also. Okay, so at, uh, there will be two uh, checks. Okay, you as the architect, uh, who should be knowledgeable, that's the quotes, then it will be checked further on by the Bureau of Fire if you comply uh, with your requirements. Okay, so another significant feature is that uh, you can issue a written notice to the owner and or contractor to stop work in portion of any work due to absence or in violation of program approved plans and specifications, permit and or clearance or certification as approved by the chief, purifier, or his or her duty authorized in that section 5, paragraph A. So what's particularly important on uh, uh, this one class is that a portion of the building is not uh, in accordance with any provisions of the code, then that portion work can be stopped. Okay. So uh, the BF can now issue a written notice to the owner to the end contractor to stop and comply with uh, the code. This is particularly important, especially here in the Philippines, where there are a lot of people who are not following the law. Okay, so, can give uh, this kind of authority to the Bureau of Fire, then it would, uh, 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 what you call this, motivate our contractors and the owners to really apply the basic, uh, basic requirements. Okay. Then another significant feature is that it takes 10 to 15 days period for compliance for violations. So it's 10 to 15 uh, days period last to comply if you have any violations. That is uh, more than enough time to comply. Then, the BF, another significant feature is that the BFP may put a sign in front of the building or structure which is declared as fire hazard. So, this notice shall bear the words warning this building or structure is a fire hazard. So, I think it would also benefit the public. And one more thing is that, uh, it would, uh, I think for me, it would motivate the owner more to comply with the law. Okay. So, this is not something that should take for granted. 
because lives are at stake when there's fire. So much better if uh, the owners of business establishments will comply with the uh, provisions of this code. So another significant feature is that the authority of the BFP to close any building structure or facility notwithstanding the permit clearance or certificate clearly issued by local authorities. So uh, this means that uh, the BFP can close uh, any structure even though the uh, building permit was already uh, issued uh, for it to uh, start if the BFP and uh, I check that the, the building or structure does not comply with the building as in the future years. Warning, this building uh, establishment has been ordered close with the Bureau of Fire Protection. Okay, so it also gives them, uh, uh, what you call this, the enforcing powers to make sure that the law is implemented. So another significant feature is that uh, six months to six years imprisonment, imprisonment or a fine of more than 100,000 pesos for both the private individual and public officer employee for violations of this section 11. Okay, so if you are the architect class and uh, you made a mistake in your design, you don't comply with the codes, then but was approved, and then there was a fire, and then a lot of people died during the investigation. But found out that there was negligence in your part as the architect, and the person who checked the plans, then will be, be fine for six months to six years. Uh, and you'll be imprisoned for six months to six years, and you'll be fine of that more than 100,000 pesos. Okay, so that's why, class, it's uh, really important to familiarize yourselves with. Uh, provisions of the fire code and the different uh, building laws which affect and govern the practice of architecture in the building industry here in the Philippines. Okay, so another uh, significant feature is the use uh, used the income generated under the fire code for the procurement of fire protection and firefighting investigation rescue, paramedics, supplies and materials, and related technical services necessary for the service and improvement of facilities of the Bureau of Fire Protection. That's in Section 13C. Okay, so let's discuss uh, uh, IRR of the Fire Code of the Philippines in 2008. Okay, so let's just uh, look into some of the rules. So it's uh, Rule 1, you have interpretation. Rule 2, coverage. Rule 3, definition of terms. Rule 4, authority of the chief BFP. Rule 5, BFP organization and professionalization. Rule 6, fire brigades, fire volunteer organizations, and fire safety practitioners. Rule 7, assistance and support the Bureau of Fire. Uh, rule 8, fire safety enforcers. Rule 9, enforcement and administration of fire safety measures. Rule 10, fire safety measures. Rule 11, permits. Rule 12, fire code access. Rule 13, administrative forces. Rule 14, miscellaneous and access to the list of needs. Okay, so rule 3 is definition of terms. So let's go to rule 4, the authority of the Bureau of Fire Protection. Okay, so it's important to understand uh, what are its functions. So, Administration enforcement of fire code and IRR should be under the direct supervision and control of the chief BFP through the hierarchy of organization as provided for in the chapter uh, 6 of Republic Act number 6975, LG and Organization Act of 1990, as amended by Republic Act 9263, the Bureau of Fire Protection and Bureau of Gene Management and Technology Professional Agency Act of 2000. So, the authority of the chief of the BFP subject to the approval of the S uh, BILG, this is BILG, includes the following. So, uh, one is 
A. To implement the rules and regulations. B. Reorganize the PFP as may be necessary and appropriate. C. Enter into a long term agreement. D. Enter into a memorandum of agreement. Number 3. So the specific authority of the chief of the PFP includes A. To support and assist fire volunteers, practitioners, and fire volunteer organizations in the country. B. Enter into external party agreements for the conduct of trainings, education, and evaluation of fire volunteers, practitioners, and fire volunteer organizations. C. Call on the police and other law enforcement agencies. D. E. Designate fire safety inspectors through his or her duly authorized representative and E. Issue fire safety inspection certificate as a prerequisite to the grants of permits and or licenses by the local government, other governments, and other government agencies concerned. F. Spec at a reasonable time, any building, structure, installation, or premises for dangerous or hazardous conditions or materials as set forth in the fire code and SIR provided. In case of single family dwelling, an inspection must be upon the consent of the occupant or upon law or lawful order from the proper court. The chief BFP or his or her duly authorized representative shall order the owner or occupant to remove hazardous operations and processes in accordance with the standard set with the fire code and this IRR or other pertinent laws. G. Order the owner or occupant of any building or structure to summarily abate conditions pertaining hazardous to life and property. H. Require the building owner or occupant to submit plans and specifications and other pertinent documents of the said building to ensure compliance with applicable rules and standards. Okay, so I think this, uh, this uh, uh, section here is what uh, will affect us in our practice okay, as much as the IRR will. So this is good class so that we will be counter check for the plans and specifications to ensure that there's uh, enough consideration for the fire safety hazards for uh, a particular uh, project. So, I uh, issue a written notice to the owner or contractor to stop work on any portion of any work due to the absence or in violation of land specifications, permits, and licenses or certifications as approved by the chief BFP or his or her authorized representative. The notices shall state the nature of the violation and no work shall continue in that portion until the violation has been corrected. Okay, so next, uh, Rule 5, the BFP organization and professionalization. So this rule speaks of the authority of the chief, BFP, to reorganize the BFP and the establishment of the BFP staff of highly qualified persons who are knowledgeable in the fire prevention, fire safety, and fire safety, uh, suppression. So this technical staff will be drawn from the following. So organic members of the BFP, other government offices and agencies, and other sources. In the case of paragraph B and C above, members, members will be appointed into the service or hire as consultants in accordance with existing laws, rules, and regulations. Then Rule 6 of the IRR provides for the provision of fire brigades, fire volunteer organizations, and fire safety practitioners. Uh, what, is, uh, what is new here? And change this. What is new here is the provision which provides that during fire operations, the fire volunteer is under the direct control and supervision of the fire ground commander of the Bureau of Fire. Then Rule 7 is a new provision of the Fire Code which provides for the authority of the BFP to call on the police and other 
law enforcement agency to render assistance. Okay, so I think the PowerPoint here is messed up. Okay, so for the PNP, so during actual fire fighting operations and fires and investigations, business closure and summary abatement proceedings, installation of signs at the building or structure is a fire hazard, obstruction of designated fire lanes and fire hydrants, apprehension of violators, persons removing, destroying, tampering, or obliterating warning signs and similar abatement appurtenances and such other duties and functions of the Bureau of Fire which would essentially require uh, police assistance. Okay, so the Philippine National Police class will be involved if, uh, during firefighting operations and fire scene investigations. So if a business is closed and there are summary abatement proceedings, so in the installation of signs at the buildings of fire hazard, okay, so we need the assistance of the police there. So the obstruction of fire designated uh, lanes and fire hydrants so, so for example if there's a park private car you know a fire lane or fire hydrants so the police will handle that and the apprehension of violators so, and persons removing destroy uh, or removing destroying tampering obliterating warning signs and other abatement pertinences and such other duties and function the bfp which would re essentially require police assistance Then for the LGU, so the role of the LGU is this obs a strict observance of the requirement of fire safety for the issuance of fire safety inspection certificate as a prerequisite in the grant of the renewal of business, occupancy, and other related permits or licenses. So this is really important class. So this would make uh, businesses and business owners be more concerned with fire safety. Because uh, during the renewal of their permits, so fire sa there should be a fire safety inspection certificate. So for this purpose, the LGU and our other government agencies concerned shall refrain from issuing such licenses and our permits without the applicant first securing an FSIC from the BFP. Then, organization and training of fire bridges in all barangays in partnership with the Bureau of Fire protection to serve as first responders see in summary abatements closure and our stoppage of operation of building structures or portions thereof and d such other duties and functions of the bureau of fire protection it should essentially require their assistance then other law enforcement agencies such as but not limited to the national bureau of investigation and the Philippine National Police Climb Laboratory shall upon request accommodate and render necessary assistance on the following functions of the Bureau of Fire. A is laboratory physical examinations of the pieces of evidence gathered in the fire scene and submit the result thereof to the chief, BFP or his duly authorized representative as the case may be. Then, in the investigation and prosecution of arson cases uh, appear as expert witness thereof then such other duties and functions of the BFP which require their expertise. So, Rule 8 of the IR is a new provision which aims to professionalize and institutionalize and conduct of the fire safety inspection. For the purpose, the rule shall provide the BFP personnel duly designated as fire safety enforcers which shall pose uh, which has possess the minimum required qualification standards stated herein. Okay, so Rule 8 class is important because if uh, more professionals will be involved uh, in the enforcement of the, the fire code, then uh, it would mean that um, there is, uh, what you call this, there could be uh, a lot more uh, people who will adhere to the law and follow it. Okay? So if we apply the correct professionals who can uh, properly assess a, a plan or 
your specification then you will really see what are the loopholes in a certain uh, project that should be uh, changed in order for it to comply with the provisions of this law. So for fire safety enforcers, one must be a licensed engineer, either a civil, electrical, mechanical, chemical, uh, sanitary, and electronic communication, or an architect with at least one year in the BFP service or graduate of any baccalaureate degree course with at least three years in the BFP, then shall have a completed fire arson investigation and inspection course, FAIIC, or have undergone at least 40 hours of relevant seminars, workshops on the fire code of the Philippines and other fire, uh, other relevant fire safety seminars, workshops, and uh, non-licensed and non-engineering graduate must pass the written fire safety inspection examination conducted by the BFP. This class, so at least it would uh, give you more career options when you graduate. So, at least uh, if you want, you could also serve the BFP later on. Okay, for the non-uniform uh, personnel, so they are appointed as engineers, either civil, electrical, mechanical, chemical, sanitary, and locations and communications, or appointed as electrical building inspectors and shall have undergone at least 40 hours of relevant seminars and workshops. Then electrical building inspectors must pass the written examination conducted by the BFP. Otherwise, you can only conduct inspection relative to their appointment, duties, and functions. Okay, for plan evaluators, so must be a licensed architect and engineer or engineer and shall have undergone at least 40 hours of relevant training on the fire code of the Philippines of 2008 and relevant fire safety seminars and workshops. So in cases where there is no licensed engineer or architect in a specific jurisdiction or graduate of any baccalaureate degree with FTIIC, training shall be designated as plan evaluator. So the following shall be the main duties and responsibilities of fire safety inspectors. This A. Inspect any building, structure, or facility or any part thereof hazardous materials to ensure compliance of the Fire Code of the Philippines, BCIRR, and other related laws, regulations, standards, and ordinances within the area of responsibility. Assess compliance with the fire safety requirements, identify and recommend corrective actions for violations, defects, and deficiencies, and inform the building uh, administrator, owner, occupants of such actions to comply with the provisions of the fire code, this IRR, other uh, laws, regulations, standards, or ordinances. Testify any judicial and quasi-judicial bodies regarding matters relating to the Fire Code of the Philippines and this IRR and the performance of his or her duties related thereto when needed. So conduct fire safety lectures, seminars, workshops and drills and prepare necessary documents and maintain files and or records. Then the following shall be the main duties and responsibilities of plan evaluators. So review and evaluate building plan specifications including fire protection system to determine compliance with the requirements of the fire code, desire building code of the Philippines, and other life and safety standards, and conduct site verification and inspection on building under construction to determine compliance with the approved plans and specifications. Okay, so this is uh, our lecture class for, I think, um, this covers uh, some portions of the basic law of uh, RA 9514. Okay, so I'll post on uh, our Facebook page our activities, uh, our activity for this particular type of, uh, for this lecture. Then, okay, so hello again class. So I just feel that I, I have to add to this build, uh, video. Um, some basic concepts about building fire safety uh, so that you can add uh, these principles when you're designing your buildings okay, so this is also part of the lecture earlier uh, about the fire code
So this is the process of fire development. So from ignition to flash over to uh, in the time that will decay. So as you can see from ignition, you can see as the current is light up. So you can expect that the fire uh, will uh, continue to go up and then it would uh, go down as time passes by. This is the temp time temp temperature curve for the full process of fire development. Okay, so we have stage one, the fire flash over or growth uh, phase, so this one. Then stage two, the flash over. Stage three, we have a fully developed fire, so this is a stable phase. So when there's fire class, it won't uh, just uh, go up, then it would disappear. So there's a, a phase uh, when it becomes stable, then uh, going through stage 4 is the, the decay or the cooling period. But uh, during this portion, I think the damage has already been done to the structure. So uh, stage 1, you have a slow rate of burning. Then uh, as you move into stage 2, there's the development of heat and flames. Then stage 2 to 4, you have a load bearing capacity building elements, uh, it's maintaining prevention of fire spread water compartments. Okay, so it, it means last that uh, if your, your building or the building elements, uh, they have uh, fire resistant capacities, then there's a possibility that the fire will not spread to other parts of the building. Okay, so do you have active fire protection, so the ignition of combustible building materials. Passive fire protection, resistance to heat and flames of fire rated construction. Okay. Okay, so your active fire protection class, um, I think it would work. Uh, this would uh, affect uh, during the early phase. So when, once the fire sprinkler uh, goes the, uh, activates, so it would stop the fire from growing, prevent it from going to stage two or three. Okay. But if the fire is already in the stage three to four, so you will need the fire put uh, some uh, passive fire protection. Um, that would I uh, think this would be the, the type of materials that we use uh, for the building elements. So it should be resistant to heat and flames and uh, should have fire rated uh, constructions to prevent uh, the fire from becoming uh, bigger. Okay. Then you should also understand the human behavior during this phase. Okay, so at this temperature that's in between uh, more or less 60 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So the human comfort zone conditions depends on air humidity, air moisture factors. You go to 150, so it's tolerable for less than one hour. Depends on humidity, clothing worn, and level of physical exertion. So as you move higher, so it's intolerable in 25 minutes. Okay. Uh, going to 50 degrees, it's intolerable. Intolerable uh, for 15 minutes. Going to 300, uh, intolerable for 5 minutes, and then uh, 350 going to 400. So there's irre irreversible injury to dry skin within 30 seconds. Okay. So, one here is your standard temperature ISO curve, then it's the hydrocarbon curve. Temperature rise, the time. So a fire load is the amount of material which is able to burn and release heat and smoke in a compartment. Limitation of fuel will help to reduce the dangers of heat and smoke. So what's really dangerous thus, uh, in fires are the one of the most dangerous uh, probably is the smoke. That it would really kill you. As for example, like there's a fire, then you hit in the toilet, the restroom, and you turn on the faucet, uh, thinking that it will uh, prevent the heat, but the smoke will come in, then uh, time will pass by, you will suffocate, 
and die because of the smoke first before the fire can get you. Okay, then fire spread. So fire could spread from one compartment into neighboring compartments by conduction, convection, radiation, ultimately to involve the entire building and to the other buildings in the vicinity. Okay, so fire spread in three ways. So conduction, heat transfer through solid materials, convection, uh, heat transfer by air motion, radiation, heat transfer by electromagnetic waves. So this is an internal fire spread. So this is the origin of fire. Then fire spreads vertically via the surface riser here. Then fire spreads through non-fire door. Okay, so if your door is non-fire rated, of course it will break down. Then, or the fire spreads through ceiling through opening wheels. You could move here. Then fire spread through air ducts. Then unprotected steel beams under fire attack. So what would happen to us if there's fire? Your uh, steel beams, if it is unprotected, it will melt. Okay, so look at this. Okay, so it's already buckling. So if your, what happens if your beams will melt? Or even your columns, so the building will collapse. So a lot of people will uh, die. So uh, in your design, you must make sure that the beams, if you need it still, is well protected. Then the fire spread to surfaces and ceiling and or collapse of non-fire resisting partition walls. So from here, it, it's already spreading to other parts of the building. So this is how internal fire spreads internally. Okay. So fire could also spread to adjoining buildings. So if this is the origin of fire, okay. so at the second floor, uh, materials which could be ignited. Okay. Then through convection currents, it moves to another building from building B to A, so once uh, the fire reaches, it is not fire rated, so the, uh, the heat passes through this, uh, it met, melt uh, uh, this wall or window, then the materials here will be ignited, then another fire, so the, the fire will spread from building A to B, okay, so you should be careful this con convection uh, talents also. Okay, so this is the reaction of fire to a building board material. Then a fire resisting wall assembly using a fireboard as a component. So when you say fireboard class, okay, so this is made of reinforced concrete here. So it will take time for it to uh, for fire to pass through this. So the fire here is contained until it dies out. So, uh, reaction to fire, you have combustibility, heat release, surface spread of flame, ignitability, smoke toxicity. Distance to fire, it applies to an element of construction, a structural member, a ceiling, a partition, a door, a window, a roof, a wall, or a floor, or an assembly of elements. Okay, so, the thing here, class, is that when you design a building or uh, a structure, okay, so you must make sure that. Uh, at certain portions wherein you can predict that there are some materials that are combustible, it would be better to specify uh, materials that are fire resistant. Okay, so that's why I added this uh, in the lecture. Uh, this is really important, not only in your academics, but also someday when you practice as architect.